right. Welcome back to the fifth episode of uh, the DMG's Third and Wrong podcast. Uh, I'm Mike, and we're here today, obviously, with Gage and Dylan. Guys, how's it going? It's been good. It's good. Just tired. Yeah. Did finals all day today. There you go. Glad to be done. Heck yeah. Dylan? Oh, you know, just uh, survived the bye week with a big old W, so that's always good. Oh, yeah. I'm with you there. It was a good week for uh, us AFC boys, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, what about you, Michael? How are you feeling? Um, feeling all right today. I don't know how I'm going to feel come Saturday here. Yeah. Big Should game Big game against the boys. The boys. Um, Saturday is going to be a big day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys play two on Saturday. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah, if you're... We have a team to play. Exactly. A lot of peoples. Well, a lot of peoples, yeah. which we will cover. I'm also trying to get over this cough, so if I happen to cough, it might end up on this. So, yeah, you, yeah, you might end up on there too. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> what's the word? It's um. Dylan's oh, also got the COVID. <laughs> no, no, it's just been this weird cough. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of chronic now. So, hmm. COVID. No, I can I can still <laughs> taste. I got Chex Mix over here. Yeah, and I can definitely still taste that. So we're we're all good. Oh, you didn't know that the list extends way past just taste. There's a lot of no. Different that's things. it. That's the only one. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's uh, let's not go into that. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> all right. Gage, what game's up first? <laughs> Yeah, well, for the weekly recap, we can start off with a, a very good one of uh, Minnesota versus Pittsburgh. Brilliant game. Oh, yeah. For, if, your, if your name just happens to be Dalvin Cook. Yeah, that guy went off. I thought there was a pretty clutch performer in uh, Chase Claypool that game. Oh, yeah. M- MVP of the week, honestly. He's my offensive MVP. player of the week, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I like how First he's like, down. oh, yeah, I just... I just do my little first down thing, and then the offensive lineman threw the ball on the ground. So yeah, it was all their knocked ball. it out of my hands. While I was trying to give it back to the ref. Yeah. Get Listen, out can of you here, make, bro. can you make a TikTok video of running the ball down to get it snapped? No, but you can't of that. <laughs> well, so. yeah, that's that's the thing. Like he was saying in his press interview after, yeah. he's like, "Oh, the ref wasn't even there." So I just did my quick little point. Took like maybe a second or two, and the guy wasn't even there when I got there. But like. The whole point of a two-minute drill is you catch the ball, you hit the ground, and then you sprint to the hash mark so and up. drop the ball yeah. there. And well, you don't just sit there and you know point your finger when you have 30 seconds left on the clock. That's just – I know it's been beaten dead, but that's just crazy. Saw this, saw this one today. I don't know if you – Dylan, can you see that? Yeah. That uh, is beautiful. great. Oh man, they said, they said that was funny. I thought I'd bring that up. Yeah. Listen, something as good as uh, as good as a Browns win is the Steelers losing. Okay, and I've got no shame in admitting that. Um, in all, like actual recap of the game, Minnesota played like they could be, you know, division leaders with you know. Or NFC, you know, playoff contenders. And then they also showed that they lost to the Detroit Lions all yeah. in one game. It was rather impressive. The first three quarters were like, man, this is actually pretty good. You know, they could actually, you know, win the division, make a good run, maybe, maybe even win a playoff game or two. And then the fourth quarter hit, and it's like, oh, I remember when we played the Lions. What a great day yeah. that was. I feel like this game was just a reminder how neither of these teams beat the Lions. <laughs> it was just it was just bad all around. <laughs> it's true. Well, but the thing too though, like I mean, how much of this win and how much of Dalvin Cook's success came from them literally saying that he wasn't gonna play until like the hour before and that's true. you know, Madison was supposed to play the whole game. 
I'm sure I'm sure it's not like that big of a deal, yeah. but my fantasy team is pretty heated about it right now. <laughs> yeah, same. I had Madison and then I yep. did it. Yep. But uh that's that's three and right there for all of us. We went one and oh, everyone picked Minnesota. Um we did not get a perfect score on this next game. Uh the uh, battle of the BYU Cougar quarterbacks. Uh yeah. Dylan decided to pick his uh boy for the New York Jets. And Mikey and I smartly picked the Saints. New Orleans versus uh, These are New York. Some very subjective terms you're whipping out here, boy. Subjective as in factual? Like subjective. But, anyways, now I'm looking at the game. Uh, yeah, Zach Wilson has no one to throw to, he has no one to block for him. So I don't know why the hell I picked the New York Jets. But Me and Gage were wondering um, the same thing when you said it. Dude, the thing that's crazy. <laughs> Is there was I'm looking at it right now 63 passes for less than 300 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, just awful. Well, that's a first for Zach Wilson. The the leading rusher for the Jets is Zach Wilson, and yeah, he, uh, he doesn't even have as like the leading rusher for the Saints is Taysom Hill. So I mean, I don't know why we don't just put out our quarterbacks as running backs at this point. Well, they do, uh, but Taysom Hill is actually perfected on winning games by doing that perfected or he just it can beat a bad team no when, when, it, when it's against byu quarterbacks he's perfected oh. it yeah he's number one well, oh sure that makes sense no i uh, i should i shouldn't have picked the jets i was just feeling a little bit on the hype train of <clears throat> zach right. playing good one time well not playing bad one time is more like it but <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, when you go 19 for 42, I mean, that's I pretty good. See if there's like it's under, any fifty percent. It's all. I want to see if there's any like uh, stats on drops though, because I can guarantee you there was at least 20 drops that game. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you the same crap that every Browns fan gets about Odell. I mean, Baker's just not throwing to go. It's not, it's not yeah. their fault because Baker's not doing it. So Zach Wilson's <laughs> just not putting it in the right spot. They would have this dropped the, it if he threw it right. So this is this is uh, the receiving team for the Jets right now. Braxton Berrios, who is a second string slot receiver. Ty Johnson, who's a second string running back. DJ Montgomery, who I have no idea who he is. Ryan Griffin, tight end. Keelan Cole, uh, Jay Cr- Jameson Crowder, who's solid, but you know, I mean he's a slot guy. Number and one. Then, yeah. But, yeah, like, slot. I mean, you have two slot guys that can catch pretty well. But, like, other than that, like, they have nothing there. That's just it's it's, sad. It's almost like the Jets are just the Jets. The Jets, yeah. <laughs> J-E-T-E, let's go Jets. Garbage. Yeah, you, you guys totally missed that. That was, you know, the the draft where the guy gets up there and chants the Jets, and he goes J-E-T-E instead of J-E-T-S. <laughs> No, I no, haven't. No. That's, oh man, that's, that's pretty cool. great. I think it was in Dallas. He gets up there and shouts, "J E T E Jets." <laughs> See, I didn't want to say anything because I was like, I don't exactly. want to call Mark Dylan out and you know no. make him look stupid. But that makes much more sense. I feel like you don't have any issues with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Something else I don't have issues with is uh, San Francisco versus Cincinnati. Cincinnati taking that L. I have no problem with that. Yep. That was a close game, though. Yeah, it was. That was a good game. Yeah. Game. Great game. Yeah, came home from the Browns game. My dad's a Niners fan. We popped that up on. Watched that game. It was good. That was a good game. Yeah. Kittle is a beast. the best tight end in football. You can make, yeah. like, the argument with, like, Kelsey, but I think Kittle, like, if you just take overall, Kittle's better. He could do more than what Kelsey can, and he can do what Kelsey can. I, I think he, more game. than anything is he has a better catch radius than Kelsey, and he's faster. He's faster, he's more athletic, he's better at blocking. Yeah, but Kelsey's not a bad blocker, though. Like, no, 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 no. These are both, like, A1, yeah. A2, no different. Yeah. I you, you put them in any team, they'll all succeed. It just Kittle is 
I think he's the man. Yeah, well, I drafted him, and then he decided to get hurt for like the first twelve weeks. So, and now he's won you games the last three weeks. So, yeah, but I'm already out of the playoffs in like two of my leagues because of him. So, I'm kind of bitter. Um, tastes like salt. Yeah, dude. (laughs) Again, like, but the Cincinnati Bengals, the hype that they get, they're a very good team. Have that potential. Yeah, I think they. Once they get more experience with all those young players, I think they will be a force to be reckoned with in probably three years or so. But I mean, for now, they're—I mean, they're still—they're all right. They're—they're they're all uh, in the hunt, almost yeah. playoff. So yeah. we can't be mad at that. Yeah. Well, and um, I mean, if they get a better offensive line, I think that's really the, the biggest key that they're missing yeah. right now because their defense is actually pretty good. I I don't think I have an issue with their defense. It's just it's the, top eighteen. Yeah, they're so, which is good enough. But like, yeah, their offensive half, line yeah. could really bust out Joe Mixon and give Burrow just more time. Yeah, I I just Zach Taylor, head coach. Yeah, like head coaching matters a lot in this league, and you could tell which coach was better between Kyle Shanahan and Zach Taylor. There was a point in uh, in the fourth quarter, they ran the same five plays the Niners did, if you want to go back and watch it. They ran the same five plays and got them every single time. And it was like the last two drives, they went with like the same three or four, same route concepts, same play action, and walked all the way down the field in overtime and won. Yeah. But... That that Brandon that Brandon the Brandon Ayuk uh, little leap for the pylon was pretty Dude, dope. He flew. That was crazy. Yeah, I don't know how they didn't call that a touchdown in the first place though. Like it was like clearly a touchdown, and then they spent like two minutes. Yeah, I think there was a question about one of his toes being out, and then where the ball was and stuff like that. But... Um, we all went perfect on that one as well. Nice. Three and oh. I will uh, add I will add one thing real quick to the coaching thing. Zach Taylor has only been the head coach for what, two years now? Mm-hmm. I mean obviously he started out god awful. This is his third year. Yeah, this is be his third year. So obviously he yeah. started out god awful. But I mean, the team's getting better and it's showing. So I mean he's they're getting they're all getting the experience. I mean they're all I'm growing not saying together. He's a bad coach. Right? No, he just no, he's just not as good as yeah. Uh, right, but there's there's some things, and I have like the same thing with like Kevin Stefanski. There's no adjustments, so you've got your game plan, and if it works, then great, you guys are gonna be fantastic. And if somebody adjusts to that and figures that little part out, yeah. there is no second level. It's just the same. Well, it should work. You know, this isn't remember the Titans high school football. Yeah, they're they're still like Change coordinators at this point still. Yes. Yeah. Um next game. So, wait, what real quick. Okay. So back to the Bengals. Just mm-hmm. a quick question. Do you guys think that the Bengals would be better right now with Panay Sewell no. or with Jamar Chase? I think there would be I'm saying right now, I'm not saying which is a better choice. I'm just saying right now, do you think that they would be better it's right now? It depends on how you ask it. As like an overall team, Jamar Chase. Yeah. As the overall team for the Bengals in the AFC North, it would it it, it would be uh, Sewell. Sewell, Panay Sewell. They they struggle with pa- like pa- pass blocking. I mean, yeah. Joey Bosa literally dominated that game. Nick Bosa. Yeah, Nick Bosa. One of the Bosa Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's like 17 of them. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I, that, that's why I was asking. I wasn't trying to make a point or anything like that. I just like was trying to get your honest opinion. No, I think Jamar Chase has done really well. I think yeah. Burrow, like when he's in a pinch or he needs something to go, he just he forces it to him. He's just like, okay, I know he's my boy. And yeah. it, it worked. I mean, he got two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. So, yeah. Um, 
speaking of high quality quarterback play, um, next one up is uh, Atlanta versus Carolina. Oh, up back no. is a uh, zero and three. Jeez. Zero and three. Yikes. Hey, don't hate uh, on him. Not hating the dude. I'm just kidding. People like I, I was. Uh, I was in Cleveland and was with a buddy of mine from childhood, and he's uh, talking about how he just needs to retire. Cam does, and I was like, mm, mm. "No, dude. If people are going to keep paying you this ridiculous amount of money to come yeah. play, dude, show up. Who cares? Take why, that guaranteed money." Yeah, why would you retire? Yeah, and for some reason, uh, Matt Rule has uh, said that he is still their starter. So he'll be out there again next week. Mm. I can tell yeah. you who I'm going to pick for that game, and it won't be them, that's for sure. <laughs> um, is- Atlanta. Go ahead, go ahead, Dylan. I was just going to say, it's just such a a bad game. Like, it just, I'm it trying to look not- at the stats right now. There's just, there's nothing in this game. But yeah, go on. Um, Atlanta's. Got to be the weirdest team right now. Like Winner. they are, yeah. I think they're in the playoffs or like a game out of the playoff spot or like tiebreaker out of the game playoff spot. They have a negative point differential and they have beaten the teams that they should have beaten that aren't good. And then they get like blown out by the teams that are like decent to really good. It's, it's quite interesting. They are literally like. The definition of middle of the table. Yeah. All the way across. Um, I don't think we'll spend too much. I don't know. Do you guys have anything to add with that game? I didn't There's, watch that no, game. I, didn't I was in there. there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to any uh, Falcons or Panthers fans, but I'm not really that sorry. I don't think a lot of them are going to come out of their way to say that they are right now. So. Yeah. I feel bad for Carolina because they have an incredible defense that is being pointless at this point yeah you know, it's like the bears the last couple of years they'll do really good and then they just kind of like all right what's the point and then kind of give up towards the end of the year and not not be very great yeah um i do say for the falcons if cordero patterson plays they will score points if the he does not they have n- no chance whatsoever to do anything yeah he's their offense right now he's a beast i think he, he think he got 10 touchdowns now Career career total highest. Wow. So good for him. Dude's getting paid one year, two million. He's gonna go get paid after this. Um, another boring game. Uh, Seattle at Houston. Yep, I was just looking at that one. We all got that one right as well. Uh, yeah, we we all got Atlanta right, and we all got Seattle right. Um, Perfect. they covered as well. I know that minus nine, and they won by more. Good, yeah, by 20. good teams win, great teams cover. Great teams cover, yeah. Um, I think it was good. I mean, it wasn't obviously it wasn't going to be like a great competition game, right? Seattle should win that game. Yep. Um, but I think it was good for uh, Russell. Kind of got back into his mojo. Yep. If your name was Russell Wilson, Rashad Penny, or Tyler Lockett, great game for you. Yeah, for real. And if your name's DK Metcalf, people are about to drop you in fantasy. Yeah. Draft stock's yeah, going remember, down, buddy. You remember when, uh, was it Shannon Sharp who was, who said something about him this year? About, like, his, uh, his, uh, it was either Shannon Sharp or someone, but he was like, oh, yeah. But then um, DK Metcalf responded and was like, oh, I've already, you know, I've already outperformed your achievements or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Sharp. I think that was last year, but that was Shannon Sharp. I think it was this year. Who knows? Yeah. Not this guy. But in, um, let's see. He is averaging. Um, oh, it's not a lot. Yeah. It is not a lot. Um, well, I mean, he has almost 100, 800 yards this year and eight touchdowns. It's not the worst. He slowed down way, way, way. He slowed way down since the beginning of the season, that's for sure. 
He had like a good hot four or five games. Yeah. Yep. Um, next one up, uh, Dylan and I got this one right. We both picked Kansas City. Uh, and yeah. Mikey picked the Raiders. Yeah, I did. Um, you guys were okay. going to say it was close. Yeah, Michael, hey, I'll let you go ahead and take this one. You're an expert of this game. No, that's just what history kind of tells you. It was an arrowhead, man. The Raiders usually, for some reason, always play well there until they decided to go out on the field like morons and just start <laughs> stomping on the arrowhead. And they didn't think like the Chiefs were like, oh, no, nah, bro, that's cool. Yeah, you guys go ahead. Hey, let's have a good game out there, guys. And then first play of the game, Josh Jacobs decided to just crap the bed. Yeah, uh, I, uh... Strip fumble picked up by the Chiefs to the Casa for six. Sheesh. I uh I didn't I was I was at the Browns game so I missed all the eleven o'clock games but I went back and watched this the condensed version because I mean that's got to be a real quick game. Man, man, oh man. Yeah. Not a lot of positive things for the Raiders there. I remember I seeing it. that you had your starting quarterback fumble and lose the fumble. Your starting receiver technically was Zay Jones. I think he's a starter now. Your starting slot fumble and lose the football, and your starting running back uh, fumble and lose the football. Four fumble turnovers. That's unreal. Plus an interception. That's five takeaways. I didn't even know about that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. I saw something like while I was at the Browns game, like a tweet, and it was like. The Raiders haven't seen the uh, logo since they were there before the game. And I was thinking, like, in my head, before I knew any of that, I was just, like, for the coin toss, like, right, oh, so, man, they're just not playing good. And then I saw what happened, and I was like, oh, no, that's 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 gold. That's so funny. Um, But, you know, Kansas City. I think we said this on our first podcast. They're team in the AFC this yeah. year, aren't they? That's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be a tough race for it. But we did say this at the beginning of our first episode. We said that the Chiefs are going to go on some crazy run. And they're going to put it all together. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. It's, it's yeah, exactly their defense what we has said. a lot better. Yes, their defense has turned up a lot. Yeah, it's quite annoying. But good it's for very them. annoying. Because I think it was like... I think it was two weeks ago, or I might no, it was three weeks ago. It was like one of the one of the commentators was like, "The Chiefs' secondary is absolutely elite. These guys are the greatest." And I was like, "Dude, what the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> I was like, "The only one that's probably elite on their secondary is Tyron Matthew, and half the time he isn't even playing in their secondary. He's just lined up wherever on the field." I was like, "The next person, the next person that's best is what's his name?" Uh, Mike Hughes, the corner. Yeah. yeah, but it's like their secondary is not like it wasn't elite. It's like they're not elite, but I mean they're obviously playing like it now because I well of course so, so. it helped it helped because they have Chris Jones, Melvin yeah. Ingram, and Frank Clark. Yeah, so now that secondary doesn't have to cover for as long, and those yeah. guys are kind of running rampant. One thing I was going to say real quick, uh, Mikey, this is a a little bit of. Uh, what it feels like to be not a Patriots fan for the last 20 years. I hate it. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Cause you, you go through every season and anytime any Patriots player does something, it's their elite and they're the best to ever play the game. Well, to be so, fair, more than just, half just of them, little, more than half of them were. That's what Chiefs fans would, would tell you, but I'm just saying that's how it feels. Yeah. But Chiefs fans are delusional. That's how it feels. Did we even really get away from it? I feel like the Patriots are still that way. It's just annoying. No, no it's Matt That's, Jones. They have some humble pie with Cam Newton, but yes. yeah, that one year where they were what one game under five hundred. That yeah. must have been awful. seven and nine. Two games under five hundred. Man, I don't know how you guys made it through that one year. <laughs> Do you know how hard it was to sit down and watch a lot of those games of Cam Newton yes. throwing the ball five yards in front of him into the freaking dirt? Yes. And no, there was a I receiver watched. five yards in we front had, of him that was open. We had Jacoby Brissett. We 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 knew that before you did. <laughs> Sorry, he's the he's the worst of the 
Brady apprentices. No, I love Jacoby, but he just he had like a he had one of those um like you know when you have those optical illusions where you have like a you have like some sort of like blindness to like like peripheral blindness even though it's like in your like line of sight, you can't like see something or whatever. Yeah. That was Joe Kobe Brissett with any of his wide receivers. So <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have no idea what it's like sitting through watching Cam Newton play a game. I've only yeah. had to watch Charlie Fry and Dorsey. Yeah, we, 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 we know I the list. I can keep going. Yeah. I can keep going. Hold on, who was that one guy Brady that was from? Jake Delhomme. Who Who's the one guy that was from Notre Paul Dame? Boy. Oh. Johnny Menzel. No, not him. Brian Hoyer. Merce- no, not him. Brandon Whedon. No, not him. <laughs> what, what was USC it? guy. USC guy. No. What was no, his name? Notre I'm, talking, Dame. I'm talking about Notre Dame. Brady Quinn. Oh, was that Brady Quinn? No. Brady Quinn's from Notre Dame, yes. It was a different Oh, you guy. mean Deshaun Kaiser. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. Deshaun Kaiser. Oh, man. Cody Kessler. Yeah, I, I have like no idea what it's like. Man, Cam Newton, that must have sucked. Keep in mind, guys, all these quarterbacks you're naming are within the last five years. <laughs> Just, all right, moving on to, to the NFL. But yep. speaking, speaking of uh, the Browns and uh, hopefully that the Raiders can continue the trend of fumbling footballs because the Browns this week forced two, one of which was probably the best play. I've seen as a person in in person, literally oh, in, in person, person okay. at the yeah. stadium. In person, I can give you that. That was that was a, a brilliant experience. I'm not gonna lie. That like the entire stadium, you know, sold out, jam packed. Miles M- Garrett MVP chance. It was sweet. Strip sack, recovers his own fumble, returns that for a touchdown. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Yeah, that game was not the funnest to watch, though. <laughs> Just saying. Mm. It, I mean, I'm sure in prison, like especially yeah. with that that strip sack and everything like that. But like, I feel like watching it from home, I was like, yeah, this is like Nick Chubb wasn't really doing a whole lot. It was just kind of like it's like three weeks now. You know, it's just like a weird. I don't know. I mean, Browns should have won that. I don't know why they even let Huntley back into the game yeah. at all, but. Do you um, want do you want my opinion on why they did? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's your team. Uh, well, we'll just start off. Uh Mikey and I both picked Cleveland there. Dylan did not. He's a hater. You're welcome. Drinking that hater aid. What do you mean you're welcome? I didn't because need your I help. This them, week. They... I went thirteen for fourteen. I almost had a perfect week. I didn't need your help. Man, you are you are so humble. I love it. <laughs> What do you mean most humble? humble person on this podcast? <laughs> when you go 13 for 14, you can be as humble Wait, as you feel like fair, for fair, that week. Fair. Uh, you want you weren't that humble the week that you destroyed us and only got two wrong, if I remember correctly. Yeah, hey, all I, week. I, I just I said my line and I was done. Yeah. Um. No. So they played really well in the first half. I'm I'm sure the first half was probably fun to watch. At least like a like a decent game. Yeah. And then the second half just gave up. It's just the same thing. Let's let's waste the clock. Let's go away from what we were doing. Let's go back to first play. It's either a draw up the middle or it's a play action bootleg out to give it to Hooper for three yards, two yards. It, it uh, Kevin Stefanski kills me. Well, that's what I've been saying about the Colts is they get a lead in the third quarter and then it's like they just change their whole game plan and say, okay, well, we need to protect this lead. So So the only difference is like Stefanski doesn't. So they do what's great. And then people are like, okay, so we just have to shut Nick Chubb down. And he's like, okay, well, Nick Chubb's going to get going anyway. So let's keep doing the same thing, even though he's only getting like two yards or one yard. Or maybe our O-line can't even, you know, get somebody off the ball right now. But let's keep trying to do it. Like there's zero adjustment. It's just what's what's on that same play sheet that he's kept for the last two years, 
and go there. Yeah. Like I swear, that's gonna be the same, same, same laminated one as it's been. It's it's killing me. It's killing me. Um, how how oh, long shit. is uh, Lamar out? Do you know? Uh, p- apparently, he might be playing this next week against the Packers. So, okay. who knows? Yeah, they said uh, his ankle cool. injury was not as severe as they thought. That he's day to day right sure. now, which is good. But yeah. they also might be pulling a Kyler Murray, where they're saying that stuff, and like Kyler could come back, could come back, and then we'll miss like you know four weeks. Yeah. So I wonder That's how true. bad it actually. Is. Um. Baker played really well. Can't complain. He looked the healthiest as he's been this season since like week two, week three maybe. The Browns defense. Joe Woods is uh. He's done well. He in the third quarter, just like the offense went back to their old good old habits of just. Okay, I just need to make sure that they don't get the 50-yard play. So you can have 15 every time over the middle. You can have yeah. 10 over the middle, as much as you want. Like, you can only do that for so long. And in fairness, the only reason why that game got close was because one of the touchdowns that they had, the Duvernay, that they called down at the one when he really scored. I don't know why they made them run another play. But, I mean, Greedy Williams has got the, you know, he's in front of him, going to pick that off, and then all of a sudden he's thrown to the ground. I mean, if you were to do that as a corner and the receiver was in front of you and you threw him out of the way and caught the ball, it would be pass interference in an instant. But I digress. Hmm. I can't complain about the rest of that game because it was actually pretty decent. Apart from that call and then the fact that when Baltimore got their – Onside kick that they recovered, they lined up illegally, which is just completely obvious. And the fans are pissing and moaning about it when they lined up. And then if you go watch like a clip, the ref is talking to the players, like telling them, like, hey, you guys got to adjust. And they don't, and then they get it anyways, and then no flag. So. I have a question for you, Gage. How do you feel about your top one, two, three, four... Five tacklers for the game or defensive backs. Joe Woods, baby. There you go. <laughs> if that doesn't just tell you, like, you can get 7 to 15 for free every time, I don't know what does. It's just so annoying. Because, like, they killed Like, they changed it. What, what's annoying is, like, people, like, if they try to, like, put this as, like, Lamar got hurt, so that's why we won. Lamar was garbage. They got one first down. And it was the very first play of the game. And then nothing. Like, they did the exact same thing they did to Lamar when we played them two weeks ago. And this time they didn't give up, you know, some stupid Hail Mary bullcrap touchdown. Because that's the only thing Lamar did that couple weeks ago. Our previous game. And they they were doing great. Had the same game plan and it was killing Lamar. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa Incredible. I mean, the dude's a linebacker in safety speed with linebacker instincts, and he doesn't miss tackles, which is, you know, not like, you know, you would think as a linebacker that makes sense, but, like, as a Browns fan, when you watch our linebackers play, you're like, man, I wish they, you know, a linebacker would make a tackle. And Jeremiah, he does everything. It's incredible. So he, like, he, like, he changes Lamar. It's crazy. And then Huntley came in and they and they switched. As soon as halftime came, they just went back to like some vanilla basic Joe Woods calls, whatever he feels like at the moment. And I'm sorry, but Joe Woods and Kevin Stefanski are not good to just go off the cuff. And well, I just think I just think once you get make yourself predictable within the game, then the tables turn so fast because like that's exactly what happened there is you guys got predictable. The Ravens had to, um, you know, take what they can get, and it almost worked out for them. They, they were really close to taking the game. I mean, the Browns are predictable before the season started. Everybody knew what they were going to do. The only thing that was like, oh, maybe they could be good, maybe they couldn't, Odell's coming back. And Stefanski couldn't even use Odell. Yeah. Odell's clearly still a good receiver as he's playing good with the Rams right now. He's yeah. just... Like, I don't know. I, I can get into this all day, but 
I, I don't like the scheme that Stefanski is running. It was great for last year. It went back very basic, played to the strengths that they had at that time, and let Baker get comfortable. But when have you ever seen Baker do what he does right now? He didn't do that in high school. He definitely didn't do that at Oklahoma. When he broke the touchdown record as a rookie, he definitely wasn't playing like that in that se- in that style scheme. Like the 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 narrative that he can, he's only a, a bootleg play action quarterback, that's just not true. The play action has been good for him because he's had a good coach and a good like system where it wasn't crazy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I wouldn't say that's what he is, but that's his strength. Obviously, I feel like his strength well, that, is running off the bootleg. Well, that's the strength of the the scheme. That's that's how they pass. There is well, no there is no shotgun. If there yeah. is, it's it's. It's very basic. You can get the plays off of Madden. And I, well, I'm not thing, saying though, that's like a joke. Like, I, I'm genuinely serious. I, you can get the plays off of Madden. Yeah. Well, what I mean, though, is um, rookie year, um, he started off not so hot, right? No. And then they, he came out slinging, very first game. Is this his fourth year or third? Fourth, fourth year, right? Fourth, yeah. So he came out slinging um, when he had, um, what's his face as the head coach? Freddie Kitchens. Um, Hugh Jackson. Freddie, Hugh oh, Jackson. Yeah. And then he got fired, and then they well, got Greg Williams. Well, he, he looked better in, in the, the second part of that huh. year, though, of his rookie year. Right, which with Freddie Kitchens running the offensive offense, the yes. plays, and so, then they promoted him to head coach way yeah. <laughs> like he should not have been. Yeah, so um, when, they, when they brought Freddie Kitchens in, that's when Baker Mayfield looked oh, a lot yeah. better with the play-action pass coming in strong and then not the just play year, action just anything like yeah. play action can be like the the qb read you know like getting shotgun like here okay now i'm gonna yeah. throw it like it doesn't have bootleg. to be that bootleg you don't yeah. have to play in the 90s for him but to be good he did look better that one that and that's mainly because their strength is the running game and so i mean for the for all intents and purposes the the way that the browns are set up that play is a little bit better and then in the second year Freddie Kitchens tried to make him or try to force you guys into a, a different scheme away from those strengths of running the ball and then the bootleg play action. And then in the second half of the year, they said, oh, let's go back to what worked last year. And then Baker looked a lot better in that second part of that last year. And then his third year, they were kind of were just doing that the whole time and he's looked good. And I think that just means that that's his strength and that you guys have really good running backs and offensive line and everything. But he, I wouldn't say he's only a, a bootleg quarterback or anything. He doesn't have the free – like he doesn't have that ability to be a quarterback. That's not within the system. I mean, you watch Kirk Cousins and yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo probably because those are the two closest similar offenses. They have more freedom than Baker does. They run – more plays that's creative and granted well minnesota has probably a top five receiving core and top seven for san francisco when you include Travis, or uh george oh, kittle yeah when you get into kittle i mean debo samuels what number two this year no yeah he's killing it. in yards three i think now behind Devonte. And that that's like the that's one of the hugest problems. Our, our receivers are not good. Awful. Yeah. We've got Donovan Peoples Jones, who's who's good, right? But he's good right now for like what he is. He's a second year, sixth round draft pick, right? Yeah. So he's good, but he's not good in like the NFL sense of like a top receiver who's your number one, because he's our number one, and that's bad. Jarvis is a good slot. He's a number one slot, but he's limited athletically, and he's been hurt all year. So when you're already limited athletically and then you're hurt. Yeah. I mean, he already had a lower athleticism scale. I mean, we just don't have a good, we don't have a receiving core. It's it's awful. So when you go into the year and everybody knows that and then Odell is given away, I mean, you've got no, you don't have to respect the Browns pass game. You don't. You play 10 to 15 yards down the field and you'll win. Yeah. Um, but we'll move on. Speaking of, uh, poopy schemes and poop and just crap, 
Uh, we had Dallas at Washington, the uh, stadium that literally likes to poop on its own fans. No, oh, it's nasty. I know, right? Disgusting. Um, this one's funny. This one's got a bunch of headlines. I think, uh, I, think, one, I, think I missed that one. Uh, I'll inform you. Uh, okay. It's some funny stuff, dude. Uh, one, we picked all Dallas, right? I mean, that was probably a foregone conclusion. Got close near the end there, though. Yeah, I don't. It's the NFL. It always does it that way. Some somehow, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Um, apparently, Dallas talking trash before the game, and then Washington. You know, it's a, it's a rivalry. You know, you can talk crap. It's not a big deal. But apparently, Dallas paid. And had their benches, their benches, paid like a Cleveland place to send them to Washington. So they brought their own benches with Cowboys albums and heated benches to the sidelines during the game. The fans booed Washington when they were walking off the field, and then cheered the Cowboys when they were walking off the field for halftime. Then they chant. They played like the boys are back, like the entire time during the game. Wow. A bunch of things. So, something tells me Washington isn't happy. <laughs> yeah, Washington Ooh. needs to, to change quite a bit. <clears throat> Except for their defense. They just need to they just need to pull a Patrick Mahomes out of their butt and they'll be good. Yeah, I was about to say, they just mainly need a quarterback who isn't Taylor Heineke. <laughs> I'm not saying like he's yeah. awful, but he's not an NFL quarterback. He's not. He's not a starting NFL quarterback. I should say. Yeah. I mean, he's like he's like a solid guy to have on your roster, maybe as your backup or your third string just in case. But that's Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, he's not a starting quarterback in the NFL. He'll get you wins, but he won't get you playoffs. Yeah. And when people say, like, well, the, the, the Washington was in the playoffs, in the NFC East. Yeah. Yeah, the, they go in really- like seven and nine or nine and seven. They were seven and nine last year, made the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, and everyone thought that Washington was gonna come in and run the, run the stage for NFC East this year. And it wasn't even Taylor Heineke that got him there. No, it was um, Chase, right? Chase, um, what's his face? Chase, uh, the dude, defensive end, rookie last year. Chase, Chase, uh, Young. Chase, Young. Chase Young. Oh. yeah, yeah. I think they're bad. He had an awful year this year. Yeah. Yeah, and then he went out for the year too. Yeah, yeah. he was playing really so. bad, and then tore his ACL. I think. Yeah. He's out. yeah. It's just a rough year. Um, not really much to add on to that. Uh, yeah. Dak Dak played pretty bad. Yeah, he. Yeah. Well, he wasn't accurate at all for like half those passes. It seemed like. Um. So my defensive player of the the week was De- was Miles Garrett, right? Had that whole play, broke the the franchise sack record. Um, but it seems like the DMG's defensive player of the week was Chandler Par- uh, Parsons. Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons. No. Sorry. No. I went, no. I went to an NBA game. Leave me alone. Micah Parsons. Parsons. No, no, no. I I would go with Miles Garrett. I was just giving you crap. I mean Chandler, he's or Michael, Micah, he's he's incredible. He's incredible. Yeah, he's legit. He's legit. Yeah. watching him play. Like I've been saying this, I'm only salty right now because Miles played better, right? But like when you watch him play, the dude's a linebacker, and then he moved to D end when Demarcus Lawrence got hurt, and the dude didn't mm-hmm. miss a beat. I think he got like three sacks that game. Like that's just incredible. Well, he was recruited to Penn State as a edge rusher. I don't know if you knew that, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we've I think we've talked about this too. Okay, yeah. But but yeah, no. I'm respect for him. I think he gets defensive rookie of the year, and I don't think it's close. No, no. Yeah, he'll get mm-hmm. rookie. He's even up there for the actual defensive player of the year. Yeah, I think yeah, it's but... it's Miles Garrett, T.J. Watt, Micah Parsons, and Aaron Donald. Oh, yes. Like yeah. What if he won? And peanut punch Darius Leonard. If he won. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. He'd be the first person since uh, Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor, yep. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's just hope it's Miles Garrett. 
I'm and cool. all these Steelers fans that get pissed off about I'm TJ cool Watt. That. I mean, I'd like to see Consent. JC Jackson up there miss the interception, but it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Worldwide. We live in a weekly world, and they had a bye week this week, yeah. and there was like three, four really good defensive performances. He'll be back to get a pick next week because, you know, Carson loves chucking that boy up. Mr. No, no, no. Hey, hold up, hold up. If we're gonna be if we're gonna be accurate, it's not gonna be a chucked up pass. <laughs> it's gonna be a shovel pass. <laughs> it's gonna go straight to JC Jackson. So it wouldn't even be like a normal shovel pass like this. He just like those underhand just yeah. oh crap. Get get the ball away from me. Someone else have it. Hopefully my jersey can get here before Saturday, Gage. If you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Um, speaking of a uh, brilliant quarterback play, no, no. <laughs> our next game was uh, was uh, Jacksonville versus Tennessee. Oh, even worse. Dylan picked Jacksonville. Yeah, That's what but was even I, worse. I was going out on the limb here because I'm having fun this year, but no, you're going like <laughs> the split. You know, it's it's a divisional game. It's not as bad. Yeah. No, I know, but I'm just and having then... fun. I mean, dude, the freaking – dude, this is how how bad Urban Meyer is. You want to <laughs> you know, you wanna know the most telling side of how bad Urban Meyer is? Everything this year? No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it, it's not the four interceptions from Trevor Lawrence and zero touchdowns. It's not even that. It's freaking eight carries for eight yards. And the longest being five yards. That or means the seven four. other yard uh, seven other rushes went for a total of seven yards or three yards. What is that? Who who in the NFL is even doing that? Bill Belichick, but reversed. That's even <laughs> worse. I know. Because, <laughs> I mean, at least Mac Jones threw a first down. But eight for eight, the longest being five, meaning the other seven went for three yards. Excuse me. Oh, it's just. It was rough. That was. Wow. Yeah. No plus, touchdown passes were thrown. Plus, oh. you were kind of more hoping that Jacksonville would win. That's yeah, true, it's true. But so still, kinda, like... It's kind of like bias. You, you know, I don't think the Jaguars have been this bad. With wanting them to lose every time, so... I don't think the Jaguars have been this bad, though. But I think this is, the, like, the worst year they've well, had. Well, the, they've had all really that long long crap this, like, this upcoming week with uh, him apparently, like, critiquing the coaches and calling yeah. them out for not being winners and making them read off of their their like credentials and their accomplishments and then challenging them about that stuff. So, apparently it's bad. Yeah. I, no, it's all it's all forms of bad up there. I would be I'd be shocked if he uh if he survives for another year. Yeah. Um next game, New York Giants at the Chargers. Not much to go on this game. New York was uh, dead. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Chargers looked good this week. Um, I think Herbert made the best offensive pull. Maybe not best. He made the best throw this week. That throw when he was getting chased by two guys and then just quick stop, chucked it. Like that was just. It's just one of those ones you just sit there and you shake your head. Like, how is that even. Well, I think Burrow even had one of those this week, too. Was it Burrow, or am I thinking of someone else? There was someone else that made a throw kind of similar where they were getting tackled. Yeah, it was Burrow. He was running He was running to his left, and then I think he like chucked it down to the right corner with Jamar. I don't know. I, I can't pull I it up right now. that's what you're talking about. But there was one where I think he was in the pocket, and he threw it as he was like about to get uh, sacked, like strip sacked even. And it hit uh, Jamar going left, right to left. But yeah, no, that was, I think that play was even better. The one that uh, the one that Herbert threw that was just really impressive. Reminded me of Andrew Luck against the Bengals, and he gets tripped up as he's throwing, and he lands yeah. a perfect little 
like right in the bread basket. Thank you. I'm going to take my teddy home tonight. Kind of pass. Can you imagine how Beautiful. good? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> that's, a, that's another kind of, that's another time we're talking about that. Um, so we'll move on from that one. Uh, Detroit at Denver. Um, we didn't talk about Demarius Thomas last mm, week. No, we did not. Uh, none of us like, saw right it after. until, yeah. It happened right after. Well, it came out right after we finished Denver, that yeah. last episode. So, but mm-hmm. RIP, legend. Dude, I was at this uh, really good sports deli on Saturday, and they were playing that Pittsburgh Steelers Denver Broncos game with Tim Tebow. Oh, nice. And I was like, man, dude, that. Uh. I remember being so hyped. Watching that game, I don't know why, but dude, I was the, the Steelers lost. Yeah, <laughs> that, but like, uh, it was just like a, it was like a slant or a, a crossing route or something. Yeah, this, yeah, just put a nail in the coffin on the Steelers. It was and Tebow. Uh, that was yeah. And Tebow said, yeah. "Jesus, take the wheel." And he threw Jesus, it. <laughs> take the wheel. Yeah. Pretty sure he said, like, after the game when somebody asked him Jesus helped him or God helped him, and he was like, I'm sure that God has more important things to yeah. do than watch me play football or care about my football. <laughs> gotta, gotta love him. Um, Broncos showed up that game. As that Demarius Thomas thing was, uh, they went out and they won. Yep. They did a good job. Did a nice um, little thing to honor him, too, at the first play there. Class yeah. act. Also, a, they played the Lions, right? Yeah. Yep. Class act by the Lions to decline the penalty. Yeah, it was always going to happen. Well, yeah, but uh, I think it just. Well, the Lions f- are all they can get right now. <laughs> I say, I think it. I think it'd be funny one time just to see a team accept it. <laughs> it's yeah, not worth. Yeah, the, get them back. It's not worth the crap that you'll get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd just be kind of funny to see, um, but not funny because so, someone died, had to die for it. But you know, what I mean. Yeah. Feel bad for Detroit. Kind of came in super injured to an already you would call a second string to third string roster. Yeah. yeah so that, that means not that, pretty. that game was kind of uh eh, we'll move on from that one. And now we got the big three. Um we had Buffalo at Tampa Bay. Great game. Great it was a, game. It was a great game. And then you know close games those pinstripes make sure that Brady gets his help. Yeah, seriously. I don't know how that wasn't a pass interference. I think it was on Stefan Diggs in the end zone. Yeah, yeah. That would have put them at the one-yard line, but, you know, okay. And then to give that one to Mike Evans in overtime to yeah. nail out that drive, just it, – it's just annoying. Off and everything, yeah. Yep. Yep, yeah. I, and I don't want to go into it. I mean, I'm glad because I picked Tampa Bay to win. We all picked Tampa Bay. But, I mean, at the same time, it's just so frustrating seeing the same crap for the last 20 years. I'm just glad the Bills lost. Yeah. Yeah, I bet, yeah. No, I mean, the Bills had it. um, What what was it? It was uh, 27 to 10 going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, all it took was, you know, the Buccaneers letting them take whatever they wanted to to let them back in the game. So it's almost I mean, like playing not to lose is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it worked out for the. Well, it didn't really work out for the Bucks. But I mean, uh, freaking Rashad Perryman comes out of freaking nowhere, got out of a cab to catch one pass to win the game. Unreal. But, hey, he was he was really good. Baker's rookie year. He was right there with Jarvis yeah. as our top receivers. Uh, yeah, he was he was looking all right. He's uh, good. He's good. He's fast. He he is their fourth or fifth best receiver, and he'd probably be a good two for majority of teams. Yeah, that team just loaded. has like concentration drops and everything. But um, yeah, no, I, I think the Buccaneers are the real deal. It's scary. Um, oh, no. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> But like I mean, even just like they they just have a really good defense, honestly. So it's just scary. So would they be who? What would the Buccaneers be better with Tom Brady as their quarterback, or if you put Aaron Rodgers on that team? I don't know. I I honestly, it's Tom Brady. Get, well, your love affair is over. He left you guys. No, it's. 
He left you for the hotter, yeah. younger girl <laughs> in Florida. The, the, yeah, the thing I know, but... about this is if you put Tom Brady on the Packers, Aaron Rodgers would do better because the Packers need an Aaron Rodgers. I think the Buccaneers do better with Tom Brady because all you have to do is spread the wealth, and I, I, any quarterback can do that, but I Brady feel like Tom Brady has a, has a better game plan as the quarterback going into it. Um, but I think either way, like I, I feel like if you put Aaron Rodgers in there, it would just be a lot more risky. Is is like the biggest deal. Well, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, that's our next game: Chicago at Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers uh, gets another ten percent majority stake shareholders for the Chicago Bears. Yeah, the Bears won their Super Bowl this year. They won the half. They won the first half against the Packers. <laughs> Matt Nagy was happy. Jakeem Grant, dude. Guy's good. Yeah. But just the Packers special teams is up. also terrible. They've been terrible all year. Yeah. It was a great game. Great game to watch. Um, yeah, the Packers... I mean, I've said it before. They're going to win the Super Bowl. That's my Super Bowl pick for the year. And they just keep looking better and better. That defense gets better. And Aaron Rodgers looks better and better every week. And Devontae Adams is the best wide receiver in the NFL. I just need Aaron Jones to actually do something in fantasy. I, mean, I don't need any more. Do you have two touchdowns this week? Oh. I'm, in, I'm out already. You know, I'm glad he put up two touchdowns now that I was out. But he needs to do more. I'm counting too much on that dude. Yeah, that was it. Was a poor pick. Mikey and I actually traded. He had Aaron Jones, and I had Austin Eckler. And it's like week two, and I was like, "Dude, like, how do I lose? It? You know, like this is a good trade." And now, like, you you go and look at the trade, and Mikey fleeced me, <laughs> laughed and kicked my butt out the door with it as well. Like, the trade was so bad. And you gave me Antonio Brown, and I gave you. Odell. Yeah, we're not talking about that one. <laughs> Jeez. Um, speaking of Odell. Scored a touchdown in our last game, Rams versus Cardinals. Rams figuring it out, or Cardinals rusty off of a bye? Uh, I think it's uh, the the Rams' defense actually coming out and being dominant. I think that's what the Rams have relied on the last couple of years. And, I mean, Mm -hmm. Aaron Donald coming out with three sacks. They got a pick six or interception in the red zone, something like that. And then – Basically, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I I'm just holding them to you know no no touchdowns thrown from what I'm seeing here um, the you know the the quota of James Conner scoring two touchdowns and I mean I I think they did just a really good job of containing everyone and then just playing to their strengths on offense you know running their three wide receivers and not doing much else. They look good. I'm salty about it because if the Cardinals had won, I would have gotten a perfect week. Yeah, Dylan, yeah, yeah. Dylan did pull it back with that Rams pick. He's the only one that did. Yeah, I I was just feeling that the the Rams. I know you might be able to even go back and check the video, but I said something about the Rams defense actually coming back, and it ended up being the. What's even more impressive is they lost. Ramsey too Mm -hmm. before the game like minutes before the game hours before the game and they still dominated yeah they didn't play with Ramsey well and I I guess that makes it a little bit more confusing because I'm sure a lot of the Cardinals game plan was you know Ramsey uh, Donald and yeah but I mean mean, it makes it easier with that receiving core and now you have to go up against like a practice squad player or rookie yeah but I mean when you have things that maybe are targeting or going away from, you know, now the Rams have to play a little bit more balanced. It's, it just changes the game enough to where it might have, you know, took two or three or four plays out of the, the sheet or something. The Cardinals win that game if Kyler Murray doesn't throw the ball to the other team in awful times. Like, throwing a pick's always bad, but throwing it when you're in the red zone yeah. and then throwing another one when you're in the opponent's red zone, that's yeah. just asking to lose. Yep, it was not good. But I mean, I I I still think the Cardinals are a team to 
That's going to be scary yeah. in the playoffs. I mean, they can. I mean, they've lost to the Rams and the Packers, but you can easily say that they would go back and beat those teams, give it another shot. Um, that, that's it for this week. This week's games uh, leaves Thursday night. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this week. We're going to do two videos, more of like a, not like funny, but serious one right now. And then we'll have like our more funny for us. I, I would just say we're, we're doing our, our summary of week 14 now. And then we're going to go Thank into you. our main broadcast theme later on in the week. It'll be a lot more fun. I, mean, I, I would say more energetic and lively. And I think we're going to have a lot more smack talk between all three of us. So yeah, that will be one to definitely watch. But yeah. Um, Are we going to get yes, Thank you. Stuff? I just could not get that out. No, you're good. Um. We have our uh, Thursday night picks now. We got Chargers at Kansas City at Chargers. There we go. Kansas, Kansas City, City at, at Chargers. Chargers. Yep. yep. That's um. It's gonna be a interesting game. I feel like um. I mean, the, the Chargers are playing at home, so they're basically playing away. And the Chiefs are also away, so that'll be just a really weird game altogether. But I think the the Chiefs will take this one. Put that one down. Now I'll actually do this for us. Can you see the the picks at all, or is it just the playoff <clears throat> picture? Just the playoff picture. Better? Still a playoff picture. Playoff picture. NFC. Well, that is the playoff picture. What about this? Did I pull it up now? Nothing? Nothing. There we go. Boom. There we go. Bam. Um, I'm also not like trying to go along with Dylan, but I am going to go with Kansas City. Um, LA Chargers beat them earlier this year. The Chiefs were in a bad stretch, and now they're playing really well. The Chargers go like this this yeah. year. Just up yeah. and down. Kansas City have a home game. It's not really a home game for the Chargers. Chargers don't get home games. Um Yeah, and I think they split. I don't think the char- I don't think the Chiefs are bad enough to get swept in their own division in the game. I think but divisional games it's always safe to go five, 500 one and one. That's kind of my pick. Yeah, with all that being said, I am going to be third on that list that picks KC. <laughs> yeah. Cuz the Chiefs are just, you know, it's like we said earlier, they're going to make that run. And yeah. they're making that run right now. So I think it's going to be mean, KC I, that takes it. I'm I'm excited uh, just to watch it. I mean, that's going to be a fun game. Um, this is the point total currently. It's pretty close. We'll I'm go not, over that more. Not far behind. Yeah, we'll go over that more in our next episode later this week. Um, I think that's it though, Mikey. Take us away. Well, guys and ladies, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the episode five of the DMG's Third and Wrong podcast. And uh, you know, we will see you guys Friday for our other video of the week. Deuces. Gage, Dylan, yes, sir. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real. But it hasn't been real fun. So, Yeah, no one asked. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> bye bye. This is bye.